Uh, this was posted on my Instagram. I'll drop in the picture. And one of my viewers, Complex Carlo, said, it's a stunner, but other than the occasional cocktail party, what else is it good for? Surely not walking down the mall or going to the grocery store. And I like this comment. I, I don't want to come across as bashing Carlos here uh, by any means because I relate to him. I've been where he is at right now. I remember the days where I could not even imagine spending $1,000 on one watch that just was not in my wheelhouse uh, at the time. And I wonder if I, uh, if I could show young Bruce where current Bruce is right now, <laughs> I wonder what he would think. Uh, but anyways, I remember also the time where I bought my first luxury watch uh, and I spent, I think, $1,700 and I got the James Bond Quartz Seamaster from Omega with the blue wave dial, the blue aluminum bezel insert, and I was over the moon about that purchase. I thought it was the danged coolest watch ever, and I felt like I was part of you know, an exclusive club. And I felt like I was one of the few people in the world that was really appreciating luxury watches. And it was just a very exciting time. Uh, but at the time, I babied the heck out of that watch. And <laughs> maybe you can relate to this. You know, you bought your first Grand Seiko or your first Aqua Terra or your first Rolex. And you're so proud of that watch. You're, you're in awe of the beauty. You're so excited. You've probably never spent that silly amount of money on one watch before. And you know, it's a new experience and you want to treat that watch like a treasure because you, you hold a lot of value in it. And again, I relate to that. I understand that. But at the same time, when you sit down at the desk, you take off the watch, you put it on a safe, maybe mouse pad or microfiber cloth so you don't get any desk scratches. And when you're walking through the office or your home, you're especially mindful of door frames and counter overhangs because you do not want to knock that watch against a door frame or a counter, right? You want to keep that watch perfect. You don't want to scratch that piece. You don't want to put any signs of wear because you hold it in such high value. If it's a sports watch, uh, no, you would not take it camping. You would not take it hiking. You would not take it rafting or diving, right? Even if it is a dive watch, the most water it will see is the occasional, you know, careful rinse under the tap. I remember those days. And I think a lot of you remember those days. And some of you watching this, you are in those days right now. And again, there's nothing wrong with that. Uh, we've all been there. But at the same time, kind of going back to Carlos's comments, uh, we hold ourselves back when we don't want to wear that special watch to us in a wide variety of situations. So by babying a watch, even though you love that watch, you're proud of that purchase, you're over the moon excited, you are not enjoying it to the degree that you could. You're holding yourself back. And perhaps, you know, real growth only happens over time with experience. That's the case with me. You know, the longer I was in the hobby, the more I wore those luxury watches and the more I'd realized, hey, if it gets scratched, not the end of the world, it's fine. You know, it's part of wearing watches. And uh, I got more comfortable with higher priced watches to the point now uh, where I just spent, you know, a silly amount of money on a gold piece. Whereas years and years ago, I couldn't fathom ever spending above $500 or $1,000. It's all about perspective and where you're at in this hobby because we're all at different places. Now, um, uh, let's let's do a quick analogy, and then I have a couple other thoughts. Uh, I kind of equate this to other hobbies. Like I have friends that are into cars, uh, they're into Porsche, or they're into Jeeps. And you, on, on one hand, you have the type of person that they buy that Porsche, and it really never leaves the garage that often, only in the most pristine of weather conditions, and you're only driving it to church once a month. And, you know, you drive it very safely. You're careful over every little bump. Uh, you're taking out that towel and you're wiping it down. And you're not redlining. You're not, you know, driving it like you stole it. You're not going to the track. Or if it's a Jeep, 
it's all lifted, it's got the kit, it's got the tires, it's got the look, right, and everything, but it's never been off-road. There are those types of collectors that just want the item and they don't enjoy it to the fullest as that product was intended to be used. And then I've got friends on the total opposite end of the spectrum. They drive that 911 hard and they go through tires uh, <laughs> at a kind of an alarming rate. And they use the product as intended. They go down to Moab in the Jeep or the Bronco and uh, they get stuck. They get into some, uh, excuse me, some hairy situations. They gotta get towed or pulled out of uh, you know, the spot that they're in. But they're enjoying life with that awesome product. And I think the same could be said with watches. And you are not limited to cocktail parties with gold pieces. If you bought a watch, no matter what it is, whether it's a gold day date or an Aquaterra or you know your first tag warrior, whatever it is, and you're very excited about it, well, use the heck out of that watch. If it is a sports piece, use the heck out of it. If you scratch it, you scratch it. It's not the end of the world. It happens and life does go on. I say that a little facetiously, but I think we can all relate to that. Uh, you know, where are those pieces? Uh, and I'm intending to do that this summer. I'm intending to do that with maybe this black ceramic Seamaster or this Planet Ocean or an Ultra Deep or an Uimura from Seiko or a Pelagos from Tudor or a watch that maybe I haven't considered yet. Maybe that is the next purchase. I'm not sure where I am going, but it's likely going to be a luxury watch, a luxury priced watch. It will be a sports piece and I will be enjoying the heck out of it. Uh, going on a three-day raft of the Green River, going down to Southern Utah to various national parks and state parks with friends and family. And I'm excited to wear and use these pieces. And I would encourage you to do the same. Uh, and going back, tying it back to Carlos's comment, uh, yeah, I have, uh, excuse me, worn my gold watch uh, to the mall when I had to buy that Lego set. I had to go to the mall, <laughs> wore the day date. Uh, yeah, I, I, I definitely eat food probably too much. So I go to Costco, I go to Winco, I wear that watch. I go through the car wash and you can see a picture of uh, the watch on my wrist in the car wash. I, you know, uh, let's see, I, I took my wife out to the theater. She loves the theater. We went and saw a play together. I wore the watch. Here's the wrist shot of the watch at the, at the theater. So yeah, doing even mundane things like grocery shopping, it's a lot more fun wearing that awesome watch you're very proud of rather than babying it, putting it in the safe, excuse me, or, or not wearing it at all. Then those other events, which are not mundane, like going to the grocery store or walking down the mall, uh, they're even more fun making those memories, wearing that very special piece that you're very excited about or perhaps carries a lot of sentimental value. Now, last thought, I'm not encouraging you to be reckless because in years past, I have not lived in uh, great neighborhoods or areas in various cities uh, there may be some of you watching this video, you're not in a great environment. Or some of you watching this, you live in a rural area and you don't even need to lock your door you know, of your house or whatever. Uh, everybody's in a different situation and practice good judgment. If you buy a luxury watch, insure it. Um, you know, I think that brings the peace of mind the most. So uh, use good judgment, but use those watches. Wear those watches, enjoy those watches. I try to do that, and I think it's the funnest way to go about this hobby. So with respect, Carlos, I disagree with you, but I relate to you because I've been where you're at right now, and I think a lot of us can relate to Carlos and perhaps myself here in this video. So uh, place in the comments where you're at. Would you wear a luxury watch uh, as it is intended to be used if it's a sports piece? Would you go hiking with a Submariner or you know diving with one? Would you take a chronograph uh, to the track with your Porsche. I mean, tell me where you're at. I'd be uh, interested to read those comments. I always enjoy going through the comments section. So thank you for watching this video. Have a great day and I'll see you next time.